So you finished Narcos and you were like, bro, that was so sick. Next D&D campaign has to be a drug cartel game. Yeah, but wouldn't you have to make up like a ton of rules? Feels like it'd just be too much of a pain. Well, the good news is you don't have to home rule a ton of rules. All you have to do is check out this game right here. Okay, odds are if you're watching this, you probably already know what cartel is. If that's the case, just skip to the next chapter. I won't bore you. If you don't, I don't know how you found this, but welcome. Here's a super quick overview. Cartel is a tabletop RPG in which, <laughs> holy shit, this could be hard. Cartel is a tabletop RPG in which players portray bold drug lords, dirty cops, ruthless hitmen, and Skylar White, who are all caught up in Mexico's drug war. It doesn't have to be Mexico, but that's how they wrote it. It's a powered by the apocalypse game, which means it's rules light and the only math rocks you need are the normal ones. You can do a variety of things like make deals, threaten your enemies, and get fucking shot. Of course, getting involved in the drug trade is stressful. and Your character will probably develop a coke habit, beat their spouse, or die. It's fun. So that's the textbook definition of the game. Real question is, should you play it? Well, there's some elements of this game that'll make you go, fuck yeah, that was awesome. And there's elements that might have you playing fifth edition for the rest of your life. Okay, first, this game is more RP than G. Playing a session of Cartel feels like you're the writers, directors, and actors of a crime drama rather than a bunch of nerds playing a game in a basement. Like other PBTA games, you don't roll to cast Fireball, you roll to believe if your wife believes you when you're acting sketchy as fuck. Or if you're able to successfully bribe the border guard who's about to search your truck. This also means that this game relies heavily on roleplay. So if that makes you uncomfortable, you might want to play a little something more gamey. Second, the players have a major impact on the setting. Like, it's in the rules. For example, whoever picks the narco playbook gets to determine how wealthy the cartel is and what sort of problems everyone's gonna be facing in this session or campaign. On the other hand, the cochinero determines what drugs the cartel sells, among some other things. And the dirty cop fleshes out the city's police force. Now, I don't know anyone who would consider this a bad thing. It honestly just makes the game more meaningful and fun as a player. Third, this is a game about a cast of individual characters, not one cochinero cohesive party. You're almost never going to be playing as a group. This means there'll be stretches of time where you're not doing anything. You're just watching Jason's character's life fall apart. Now, with the right group, this can actually be pretty fun. Some of my favorite moments from the game I played in were watching my friend's characters get out of sticky situations. Or in them. Now, the fourth thing, and this kind of goes with the third thing, is that PvP is inevitable. Like I said, you're playing as a cast of individuals, not a group. And those individuals have conflicting interests. The Halcon wants to find out who's the Rata to impress the Narco. And the Rata wants to take down the Narco. And the Narco wants the Esposa to get off his ass. You get the idea. This is what killed the game amongst my group. They wanted to work together against a common goal, not screw each other over. If, however, your group is more like the gang from It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia, then this might be right up your alley. Fifth. This game can be a meat grinder. I mean, there's literally a rule called get fucking shot. And if you get fucking shot, you have a 50% chance of dying. On one hand, this does stay pretty true to the realities of the drug war. But on the other hand, have you ever watched a crime drama? I mean, spoilers. It took Walter White two years in universe and 61.3 hours of television to die. Now, there are ways to reduce the percentage, such as if you're wearing body armor, you're going up against amateurs, or they're not trying to actually kill you, but still, the odds of you dying are pretty high compared to other games. Now, if all that sounds like your cup of tea, the link to Cartel's in the description, but if that doesn't and you want something maybe more superhero oriented, you should check out Masks by clicking right here. I did a video on it. Just click right there. You'll learn everything you need to know about it.